Hello, welcome back to RC Video Reviews. Today I'm going to show you how I built my portable LiPo charging station. My current pattern when I go flying is to take a big stack of batteries, charge them all up starting you know, about six, seven o'clock the night before I go flying. And then I charge batteries all night long and I put this big box of batteries together. I put them in my case and they're just stacked up like crazy. Most of the time I'll use up all the batteries that I bring, but sometimes I don't. Sometimes the weather's not quite right. There's a lot of people flying. I break an airplane, something happens, so I don't get to use it. I got to thinking about making one of these charging stations for two reasons. The first one is that I had a battery, a four cell battery, relatively new, that started to puff a little bit earlier than I would have expected it to. And I kind of got it in my mind that maybe the reason for that was because I start charging at six o'clock at night, I go out and fly at seven in the morning the next day, half the time I'll stay until two or three o'clock in the afternoon. And if I don't get through all my batteries, then I come home and I put this on a discharger and I bring it back down. So number one, I'm cycling the battery needlessly. Number two, it's sitting at that 4.2 volts per cell all day long and all night. And I got to thinking, why am I torturing my batteries like that? And the main reason is because I never had any charge capacity at the field. Now there's a lot of different ways to do this box. I made a box that works for my use case. Your use case may be very different. My use case, we have AC power at the field. So I built an AC powered box. I know how to take a battery and plug it in. And I may do that, but right now, I don't know if I'm gonna put this thing in because I don't think I wanna carry this weight around all the time when I might not ever use it at the field that I go to. So there are options for plugging in big milliamp hour rated batteries so that you can charge from DC. And I, I do get that use case, but for me, it doesn't make sense right now. Maybe in the future that'll change. So this design is really just an AC only design. So let me break into it and show you what I did and what I, tried to accomplish. If there's some way for you to use a configuration like this, maybe modified for your chargers or your power supply, by all means, go ahead. This is this works for me. I am going to handle the camera on this one because it's just a little cumbersome to try and show you everything by moving the box around. So rather than do that, I'm going to move the camera around. So I do apologize. I try to keep the camera very stationary these days, but in order to give you guys a full look at everything, I think I don't really have a choice. I've got to move the camera. So what I want to start with is I want to show you the box. I got this box at Lowe's and it was about, I don't know, I want to say $25, I think. You know, I spent a lot of time staring at the different boxes and this one just worked for me. It, after I thought about what I wanted to put in the box and how I wanted to arrange things, this one kind of did the trick for me. And one of the big selling points was that sliding tray up top because I can use that. And you guys remember my little battery cap trick? Well, this is a perfect scenario for that. So I put my caps in here. When I take a battery off a charger, when I'm at the field, I'll just stick a cap on it and then I'll know it's hot. And then I can use other cups for other things. I've got some Velcro straps because I'll be using more of these with this particular setup and a couple of specialty wires. So if, like, for example, if mine stops working for some reason, I can go over to the rails on the clubs charger and use theirs. And then, and then finally I've got my drone pigtail that I made and you know, I'm sure this will change over time. This is just where I'm starting. This is day zero up top. I fastened my jeweler screwdrivers, a couple of, a couple of capacity checkers and some low voltage alarms. Again, day zero, this may change over time. These days I really don't use much in the way of tools at the field. So that's why I've got kind of a minimal tool set screwdriver. I might put some pliers or wire snips up there, maybe a pair of scissors somehow. I'll see, I'm not there yet, but we'll see, we'll see. So I put my foam board down on the table. I flip the box over and then I trace this outer edge of the box onto the foam board. And then I had to measure how far in I had to relieve the foam for the lip on the toolbox. And when I was done, I wound up with a, a nice little template that I was then able to cut out and shape out of the foam board and then transfer to a piece of wood. So that's how I got the wood cut out. And that's how I got this upper 
piece cut out. And I did the same thing for my charger. I took my charger and made an impression on this foam board. I, I set it down on there. That showed me where to drill the holes for the feet and where to put the cooling hole for the fan. So I'll show you that when I flip the lid up to show you, but I just used templates and the same thing for the charger. When I cut a hole in the back of the case, I made a template for the charger and that's how I put my lines on the back of the case and how I use the Dremel to cut it out. So templates, this Dollar Tree foam board is really good for that because it's crushable and you can, you can make imprints and it's rigid enough where you're not fighting paper and it makes, a, it makes a real nice template. So good trick for when you're making stuff like this is to use Dollar Tree foam board for your templates. Okay, let's flip this thing up. I'm gonna take these batteries off and show you what's going on under the lid because that's where all the good stuff happens. So I made this little door and the reason I made the door is because this is where I'm going to keep the batteries. All right, so in the bottom of the box, I just made a little wood platform and I lined it with Velcro so that I could put my batteries on those strips. Now you can see the power supply egress is out the back. I do need to put cooling fans in here, so don't correct me on that. I know that. The only reason I haven't done it yet is because I wanted to get the case assembled first to help me decide what size fans to buy. My idea is to put a fan pulling air in here and exhausting air out on this side. So I will do that. Okay, here's the back and you can see the power supply egressing out the back. So the way I did this is I just made a template. I put the power supply down on a piece of foam board. I traced it out with a pencil. I cut this out. I stuck it on the case. I made my a couple of reference holes from the inside out and then I cut the rest out with a Dremel. And then to seal it, I just used a little bit of wood glue and I did the finger, you know, if you've ever done caulking in your house. I just, you know, kind of did that. And that just sealed up the little grooves and hides the rest. Now that way I can turn my power supply off on the outside and my cable plugs in from the outside. I didn't need any extra equipment to make that work. Okay, that power supply is a 350 watt power supply. The largest battery I have is a 6L5000. And if I charge both of those on those chargers at the same time, I'll be using about 250 watts. So that power supply has an extra 150 watts above and beyond what I need to charge the two biggest highest voltage batteries I've got. So that's the design I've got. The other thing that I wanted to do, and I know a lot of the real fancy cases with the laser cut decks, they're real cool looking for sure. But one of the things I wanted to be able to do is easily take my chargers off this and put them on my bench if I wanted to. So the only thing holding these down is one Velcro strap and the power cable. That's it. That's all, that's all that holds it down. And then what I'll probably do is put a balance board in here later, but I don't know, maybe not. I don't know that I need it. I think this is going to be fairly effective just the way it sits. I, I mean, that's one handed and no problem. I got that plugged in just one hand. So I don't know, maybe I'll do the balance board, maybe not, I'm not sure. And then one other thing that I definitely am going to do is I've got a USB charger. I'm gonna go ahead and find a place to put that and, and that way I can charge my phone or one of my cameras like the GoPro if I need to. All right guys, there's my take on a portable LiPo charging station. I think this is gonna be a cool little addition to my kit and it'll definitely let me take it a little easier on my batteries rather than going through cycles on the batteries that I don't really need, now I'll be able to charge them as I go, as I need them when I'm, when I'm flying. Well, I hope you found this content valuable. And if you have, I would definitely appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button. And I know there's a lot of you guys watching that don't subscribe. Please consider it. If you're here a lot, hit that button, man. Join us and, and hit the notification bell too, so you know when new material hits the channel. And for those of you who've been around for a while, I definitely appreciate your comments, your insights, and I hope everyone's staying safe out there with the COVID-19 running around. I hope everyone's taking the necessary precautions and that, that you come through this safely. All right, that's all I've got for tonight. I hope you have a wonderful evening. Take it easy.